All right, so the new Trek Checkpoint SL and the Checkmate SLR, or I think it's the SLR, um, are out. And they, they, they did two different naming schemes, which I thought was kind of interesting. So, yeah, we got two gravel bikes from Trek that are out. And for those of you that don't know, I, I really didn't like the last one. I rode the last Checkpoint SLR. And the geometry made me want to yak. Like going around a corner, I just get so motion sick on that bike. It just felt like the geometry was all over the place and it didn't know what it wanted to be. It's like, is this a gravel bike? Is this a road bike? Because it just felt unstable. Um, didn't feel aggressive in a good way. I, I really didn't like the way that bike felt. But I looked at the geometry of each of these bikes and I'm so excited to compare these because it seems like it's actually going to be a really, really good upgrade from what they were doing. So on the geometry on the 2022 checkpoint, uh, and this is just a regular checkpoint, and I'm going to measure these each in a 54. Now Trek's sizing scheme is kind of fucked up now because it's like medium or 54. It's just like, just say 54. Like, that's what everybody knows it does. As, I mean, gravel bike's technically a and in between but you know still technically under the road category if you go to most road bike companies or bike companies websites it'll be under road category so um, for the 2022 um, checkpoint which is the last generation revamp of the generation um, on the I'm gonna focus on mainly the trail and the top tube length or the effective top tube so it's 57 and this is in uh, centimeters, by the way. So 57 centimeters. And then another thing I want to talk about is the trail, which is seven centimeters. Now, if we compare this to the new checkpoint, so the 2025 model year, uh, that would be um, if you get the effective top tube length. So it's 56. 0.6, so it's slightly shorter, which I think is a good thing because this is supposed to be a bike that's a little bit more laid back. And then you have the trail, which is 6.8, so 6.8 um, compared to 7. So that's going to be slightly more responsive at the same time. So that's actually kind of a good combination. You want to be really upright uh, on a gravel bike, and at the same time, you want it to be responsive because you might have a rock or something in the way uh, you know some of the trails especially you know here in New England they're all over the place these are hundreds and hundreds of years old they've been around forever and you know people plant trees and they cut trees down um, so all kinds of rugged terrain very very good very very good I'm happy to see that and then uh, we're gonna compare this geometry against the checkpoints worst nightmare um, Specialized Diverge, aka the best gravel bike, um, at least in my experience, that I've ever ridden. Uh, feels awesome, gets that kind of nice feel like a road bike, feels very sturdy, um, feels very um, composed like a road bike, um, but also has the capability of a mountain bike. So those, those feel awesome. Uh, Specialized Diverge, uh, BSA bottom bracket. Um, stop right there. Uh, a couple years ago, I actually did a comparison between the Diverge and a Canyon gravel bike. I actually told the person deciding between the two to go for the Canyon at the time because nobody... I thought it was a cool bike um, for what you got with their, their bar. That was kind of neat and different. And the thing is, the, the Diverge, I mean, it wasn't really a knock against a bike shop. And I always say support your bike shops when you can because at the time, it was really, really hard. Um, you know, we were all drinking the Corona Light, so it was really hard to... Uh, get something from Specialized at that time, so um, if that was available, that actually would have been good for that person because they could get out and ride and not be, you know, stuck in the house drinking the Corona Light. We're going to compare the Checkmate, and this is going to be, you know, the slightly more aggressive option on paper. All right, so the trail is 6.8, and that's actually the same as the um, Checkpoint SL. But when you compare it to the um, 2022 variant, um, it's actually more responsive than the effective top tube. This is all on a 54, by the way, so you know, 57 centimeters on the top tube on the 2022 model. And then 
56.6 on the 2025 SL version. And then when we go over to the Checkmate, that comes out to a 55.5. So that's actually kind of interesting. So 55.5 is the effective top tube length compared to 56.6. So it's interesting, it's like slightly a shorter top tube for the Checkmate compared to the Checkpoint SL. So 56.6 compared to 55.5. So that's, I just find that so insanely interesting. You have a shorter effective top tube on a bike that's pitched to be more aggressive. And a lot of people wonder, you know, maybe why am I focusing so much on geometry in this video? Because I usually don't do that, but it's because there has been no bike that I have ever ridden. Maybe it was just how I was feeling that day that around a corner just threw me off. I'm like, this feels horrible. Like that Checkpoint SLR. And I wanted to like it so badly, but I just didn't. So honestly, I'm almost, you know, I'm pretty happy that it's trying to go for that more, maybe slightly progressive geometry, which um, Specialized did. And my understanding of that is it's going more toward almost like a hardtail mountain bike because it really should be a blend of that. It should be like a road bike and a cross-country mountain bike uh, got together and weren't very careful and then you got a gravel bike. It should be, it should be um, a combination of those two platforms. Something that I want to do that will really interest everybody. I want to compare this bike's geometry against the Trek Domine Gen 4 which came out in 2023. Um, and Pretty fresh bike, just came out last year. Um, you guys know, love this bike, huge fan of this bike. So 5.9 trail compared to um, 6.8 on the Checkmate SLR. So that is gonna be, it's almost closer to that road geometry, which I think is, is good in a way for the trail because you want it to be responsive and get it out of the way of rocks if you can. And it's an endurance road geometry too. Now I've actually rode my Domine, slightly off-road before. I've taken that like on legit gravel rides that were like pitched as gravel rides and there were moments where I'm like, oh, I'm kind of having second thoughts about this. But I still had a great time and I thought it was great and I, I would use it as a light gravel bike. I use it for everything. I would ride to the gravel ride, do the gravel ride, and then ride home. So I loved that. And then on the effective top two, we got 55.5 compared to 54.2. So, I mean, even shorter on the, um, on the Domine. So it's really interesting how they're blending the geometry to kind of focus more on that off-road type setting. Seems like you're getting like a more aggressive top tube on a bike that's actually supposed to be more relaxed in theory. Um, but honestly, I mean, I guess it does make some sense because a lot of people, I think they have this misconception that a checkpoint is supposed to be an offshoot of a Domine, and then a uh, Boone is supposed to be an offshoot of an Amanda, rest in peace. Uh, but <laughs> they're starting to blur the lines of it, which I think is good because you can't sell somebody the same bike over and over again because after a while you're going to feel like you've been conned, right? So it's good that these bikes are different and have different geometries and really the only way you're going to feel if you're going to throw throw up going around a corner or feel good about the bike is you have to go and test ride it uh, that's the only real way to know um, but you know from what i can see on the geometry compared to the last generation of checkpoint i actually think that this seems pretty promising and i'm excited to ride one and i also really like that the storage compartment is a little bit wider because when i have my Domine gen 3 I really liked putting um, my cliff bars in there as well as that burrito roll up thing um, that you put in there to store all your tools and your CO2, um, which I actually never had to use, which is really good, but I really like to see that. That's awesome. And a lot of you guys might wonder why I don't have my Amanda in the background in this video, but it's because I just feel like it's not a similar bike to what we're talking about here. It's funny, it's both an H2. That's an H2, a Domine is an H2, but different geometries. H2 just means it's slightly more upright. It's just Trek trying to like convey that to the average person. 54.2 is the effective top to of the Gen 3 Domine and a 54. Um, I had a 56, but I'm just using 54 for the sake of this comparison. And then it's all the way up to a 57 on the um, checkpoint from last generation. And is the as for the exact bike I was riding, 
it's still a 57 on the Checkpoint SLR. It, it's interesting because comparing that to the Checkpoint SL from last generation, so that they both have the same effect of top tube length is what I, based on what I can see, um, and that's you know the one I actually rode the SLR. But it just feels I think it's going to feel way better having that shorter top tube, um, but not quite as short as the Domine. It's just going to feel better because it's closer to that endurance road bike platform. It almost feels like they're trying to make them too aggressive for the gravel and less like you know their endurance bike counterparts and they should be different but it also should be something that puts you in upright position um, and it has a trail that's responsive so doing all that at the same time it's great that they're able to pull that off um, and then as for what model I go with this bike which one caught my eye um, Specialized has the Diverge Comp uh, which you get a mix of the electronic SRAM Apex and you get um, the SRAM GX derailleur uh, from the mountain bike Cassettes, they do that and they give you kind of that blend of the road and, and mountain group sets. Um, but as for the um, the new checkpoint, the one that I would really go for, go get the checkpoint SL5. And the reason I say that, the old checkpoint SL I thought was kind of, I don't know, a lot for what they were asking. You got mechanical GRX and it was $3,400 and they had risen that price like I think two times or something like that by some minuscule numbers so they would hope that you wouldn't notice. I see you, John Burke. But, but the, the Checkpoint SL5, $3,200, you get full SRAM Apex. Um, so the, the baby electronic group set from SRAM for SRAM Road, but it could be used for SRAM Gravel. SRAM Road just covers everything. For, so uh, gravel and um, uh, it's like the cross and everything. So you get that, um, and it'll work just as great as the SRAM Red, because, I mean, at this point, you know, you don't get the nicer springs with the, you know, the higher end stuff. But yeah, get that one. That, one. that one's such a great deal. And then you get the door where you can store all the cliff bars and things, and it's perfect. Another thing in the lineup that I like is the Checkpoint SL7 1 by Force. That's great. And I think it's the Force, the Explore, the really wide um, group set, which I think is great. Because I mean, on Gravel, they had a 2 by offering last time. And I'm like, well, why, why do you need 2 by for Gravel? You know, how fast are you really going? So I actually think that was really good. That was a good, that, that was a good opportunity to change that. Um, and you get electronic across the whole lineup, which is nice. On the SL6 version, you get the Rival, which is really nice. It comes in this cool color. And you get kind of this kind of spaceship looking like silver white color. Then you get the, um, what's this other color? This other color is kind of cool. It's like more of a purplish blue. So that one's sick too. But the SL5, I really, really like that one. I really, 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 really like that one. I think it's a great value, and I think it looks cool in either color. I'd probably go for the black dome for it. I'd say hands down my favorite color has to be in the SL7, though. The the purple and slight kind of bronze-ish color. It's almost like a slight brown, like BMW used to do these beautiful browns, where it's kind of like an offshoot of bronze. It's still metallic, and then you get a black and then purple lettering. That looks absolutely stunning. Like, hands down, um, I, I would love to ride that one um, if I lived in Vermont, but I don't. <laughs> so I don't have, I think, enough gravel near my house to justify it. Or a Diverge for that matter, because Diverges are absolutely really, really cool. And Diverge, I'm talking just about the Comp Carbon, the whole thing with the integration and all that, of the parts and everything. I don't know. It seems a little bit much for me. Um, just a lot, a lot of maintenance. Um, but checkpoint you just have the iso speed to, um, to maintain so that that's the one thing that you got probably gonna be tubeless just make sure you keep up your tubeless the checkmate slr integrated cockpit um probably the coolest integrated cockpit i've seen is the bmc caius uh, so it'll be cool to see how that compares to that bike um but personally for me i think owning an integrated cockpit bike seems like a little bit much because i like to drop my my fork out every now and then uh, just to inspect the bearings and re-grease them, so it's a little bit much. I like telling the Domine Gen 3, you had a combination, you had a little bit of cable slack, so you could drop it out, and you guys saw how I did that video maintaining that ISO speed. So all these exceptional individuals being like, oh, what if that was fully integrated? A little bit too much. So I'd say go for the regular checkpoint, SL5 or SL7. That's usually where the sweet spot of value is. But just keep in mind that um, the SL7 is the only one that comes with carbon wheels, but that's good if you buy the SL5 because you buy a better set of carbon wheels later on. But 
definitely great bike. Go for the SL5 or SL7. I hope you guys have a great day and stay vegan.